Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Creature Comforts. Creature Comforts is a game published by Kids Table Board Gaming, designed by Roberta Taylor. Plays one to five players in 45 minutes, ages eight and plus, eight plus, which is accurate because I did play this with my daughter, and she's eight. And effectively what you're doing in this is you are taking on the role of creatures, which I'll show you the bits later, and you're trying to make comforts. And what that means is like soup or pot of tea. You just want to be comfortable animals. And you're going to be playing over a certain number of months, and you're just trying to score the most points. You're collecting resources, you're using resources to make the comforts. That's it. Now there's some cool, um, it's a worker placement game, but there's some cool um, hidden information that you're not gonna know. So you're going to worker placement spots and you don't know if you're gonna have the dice to do it, which is pretty interesting. So that's enough talking. Let's go on the table, check it out. Come on, play the game. All right, so here's the game of Creature Comforts, all set up for two players. To set up, you're gonna put the board out in the middle of the table. Put the little, what is that called actually? That is called the river dial. Put the river dial over here randomly. Uh, put the four village dice on the hilltop here. Set up the meadow and the forest based on how long you want the game to play. If you want eight rounds, you'll leave all the cards in there. If you want six rounds, you'll take out a summer and a spring. Then put them on the appropriate spaces. Shuffle up all the travelers, put them in the inn. Um, shuffle the comfort cards, flip four. Each player is also going to get three, and they'll pick two to keep. Then each player will get their own board, four of the little family meeples, two family dice, and four buildings. You're going to put out the upgrades here off to the side that we're going to be building to put our buildings on and separate out all the resources, and we are ready to go. All right, so first thing that's going to happen is each of these players are gonna pick two of these comforts that they wanna keep. If you look at the comforts, they're gonna be worth some points, they're gonna need some resources, and they may give you some kind of special points if it meets another criteria. And I think I'm gonna keep the two board games because they give extra points for board games, and I'll discard this one. So I'll keep that. Uh, they'll just get rid of this one. Keep those two. All right, now we're ready to go. So the first thing that happens is let me flip this over so I can make sure that I'm doing it right. The first thing that happens is that a new traveler is going to come. So we'll flip out a new traveler. If it has an immediate effect, we would do it, but it has an all month long. Every unresolved worker takes two uh, plus or minus tokens, which are actually called lessons learned, I believe. Um, yes, lesson learned tokens instead of one. And it's going to give you some ability to get some different workers. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to step two, which is roll your family dice. So you're gonna take your dice, roll them, and they're gonna go back on your board. So you know you're gonna have a six and a four to work with. And this player, they have a six and a three to work with. Now, at the same time, we're gonna go to areas to do some stuff. You can't block anybody out. Each player can, like if I send a worker here, I can't send another worker there, but all that kind of thing. So the areas are up here in these two spaces. You're gonna be using dice to collect resources. So there's Books, coins, apple, yarn, mushrooms, wood, and apple. Up there, you need certain types of dice. Down here, you're going to get two stone, one stone, a coin, and a stone. If you put a three here, a four, or a five, or a one, two, and a six, or a six. Down here, you can use the traveler. He'll do all these transactions here based on the number of die that you use down there. Over here, you put a die here. You can take any of these upgrades as long as you can pay for it. Build it next to your card. Put a building on it. Score some points and give you some kind of special ability. Then over here, you're gonna trade some goods to get other goods, and down here is where you're gonna get new cards. This one will let you take one from face up. This one, based on the number that you use, you can take some off the pile. All right, so I need some goods. I need, here are my cards. So I need board games. I need two random resources, coins, and book. That's what I need. So I need to go get two books. So I'm gonna come up here for sure. Um, I will, I want a coin, so let's go over here. Um, let's go here, and 
let's go here. And this player is going to do similar types of things. They're going to go here. They want to go here. I'm just going to go to this, a couple of the same places. And they want to visit the river over there. All right. Now we've placed. Now, you notice we only know where two dice that we're going to have. You notice this one needs three. That's where these dice come in. So these are going to roll. And these are going to give us more dice to use for our actions. And each player is going to use those dice. So I have the little earthworm figure. And I get to go first. So the first thing that happens is I put my dice up here on the hilltop. And those are the dice that I get to use. Now, you don't actually manipulate dice because everybody else is going to use the same white ones. So I'll show you how that goes. So first thing I want to do is... I'm gonna send this four over here, and I'm gonna get two mushrooms, two mushrooms. Then I'm going to send, uh, I don't have a three, dang it. And I'll send four, five, six, cause I need a run of dice here for two books and a coin. And then, man, I can't do that one, that's a little terrible. All right, then I'll send this one down here and I get to take one of these face up cards and I'm gonna take the toys. And when you take a card, these slide down, new one comes in. And at the end of your turn, you can't have more than three of these cards. And that's the end of my turn. So I bring back my, my workers, put the dice back, bring back my own dice. Any of my workers that didn't fire off a die, this one gets a lesson learned token, which will let me manipulate the die up one pip down one pip. This comes back, this comes back, you come back, you come back. All right, now the other player gets to do their thing. So they'll do the same thing. So this, their dice will come up here. And, oh, and I get two lessons learned because of the guest. All right. Now this player is going to, they need a four. So they'll spend the four here, put the one here. So that'll give them two mushrooms and a stone. But well, before we get to them, actually at the end of my turn, I get to actually build some cards if I can. So let's do that. So I'm gonna build one board game. So I need two of any resource, a coin, and a book. And I will build this one. I'll just put it next to my thing here. Now I get seven points at the end of the game, plus one for each board game and toys that I build. So that's good, and I have two left. All right, now back to their turn. So they did this, did this. Uh, they don't have a one and a two. So they'll just send this die down here and they're gonna take uh, this, this one. These slide over, new one comes out. And they didn't fire this one off so they'll get two lesson learned tokens for that one because of the guest. Comes back, comes back, back, back 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 all right now they can build some cards they only have two mushrooms and a stone probably not a lot they can do with that nope they cannot build they have this stuff they need lots of wheat and mushrooms and yeah they have a board game as well so they only have three cards so they're good all right so now at the end of the round what happens is this card goes away this card goes away we rotate this this traveler goes away, a new one comes out. This goes away. This goes away. These slide down like so. This slides down. And we are first player passes and we're ready to go again. So let's play one more round. All right. so. First, now it's that player's turn. First thing they're gonna, everybody's gonna do is roll their dice. So we got two fours here. They have two fours. Come on, that's terrible. There we go, three and a five. You get one roll, I just try to do different stuff. All right, now, um, all month long, all four valley locations provide an extra apple. So let's go ahead and put an extra apple up here on all of these. So if you go to these, you get an extra apple. All right. So now we can place our workers. I think, what do I need now? I need stone, wood, coin, and two different random things. 
So let's do. I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to go. Over here. I'm going to go here. And I will go here. And then they're going to do some other things. They need, what do they need again? They need wheat and mushrooms. Let's get some wheat. See if we can get some wheat. So they're going to go here. They want some mushrooms. They're going to go here. And they will go here because I want to try to show you this maybe. Yeah, we'll, tr we'll try to show this to you. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try. All right, now, since everybody's placed, we're going to roll. So these are the village dice that we have to work with. So these are the, the white ones are called village dice and our dice are called family dice. So they're going to take their dice up here. And now gray is going to get a resolve their deals. All right, so they need a total of 11 or higher over there. And they need a three and a four. So let's do the three and the four here. That'll give them two mushrooms and two apples. Two apples, two mushrooms. Okay. Then we want to go down here. We'll use this one because you can do any number, it doesn't matter. And they're going to trade two apples for a wheat. Man, it's so expensive. Yeah, do it for a wheat. All right. Then they have this one. They need to be at 11. It's terrible. But I gotta get that. I gotta get those. Even with this one, I can't do it. That's 10. So we're gonna bump this up to a three. Put that on like that. So that's three, six, and five. That's 11. So they get an apple, two wood, and a mushroom. And then this one will not get anything, so they'll just get that back because they don't get anything. So they'll bring back their workers. Dice. Worker. Dice. Worker. Dice. All right. Now they're going to be able to build a card, maybe. Let's see. Um, two apples and a coin. Do I have two apples and a coin? No, I do not. Don't have two wheat. D nope. Okay. Can't do anything. So just kidding about that. All right. Now back to me. I get to t take my turns. So what do I need? I need wood, stone, coin, random resources. All right. So let's go up here. I need 11 or higher. So let's do... Ooh. I gotta use three dice for that. That's awful. All right, so there's 11. So I get an apple, two wood, and a mushroom. All right, then I'm gonna come here. I need seven or higher. So we'll do all two dice. So let's just do this plus this. That gives me four plus three, that's a seven. So I get an apple, a yarn, and a coin. And then I'll send my one down here and I'm gonna take the rocking chair. All right, so now I get to complete some stuff. I'm gonna complete, I can't complete, do I have a book? I do have a book. So let's complete the board game. I need an apple, two apples, a coin, and a book. Done. Got another board game, which is going to give me extra points. And I can also build nothing else. Because everything else I need needs a book and three wood. I can't do that. So I'll take the dice back. I activated all of my workers, so I don't get any bonus or any lessons learned. Oh, over there, I didn't activate that one. I forgot about that one. So... I do get lessons learned. Good job. So this one comes back. And then that is the end of round two. And that's how the game is going to keep going through. I set it up for a six round game. Then at the end of six rounds, 
you're going to do some scoring. Scoring is pretty easy. It is all your comforts that have hearts marked on them, plus bonus points that they're going to give you. So this would be seven plus one for each other board game. So eight. So each of these will give me eight. So 16. Then I would get improvements. If I had any improvements, let me show you how those work. So when you build improvements, you're going to take one. You're going to pay the goods. So say I had uh, wood and a stone. I'd put that back, build it. It's worth two points put a building on it, which is going to give me more points. And then I have a special ability. You can build four of these because you have four buildings. That's kind of how those So you get points for all those and anything else they give you. Uh, revealed cottage slots. So those points. And then leftover resources, you get two for every book, one for every coin, and one for every three. So I would get one more point for these. And then whoever has the most points after all that is the winner. That's how you play Creature Comforts. Let's go at the top. See what you think about it. What do you think, son? What do you think? All right, well, that was Creature Comforts. First, let's 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 take a look at this box again. Components. Kids Table Board Gaming has amazing art. Like, I think their art is attractive. The boxes are gorgeous. Um, everything that they do, production-wise, is fantastic. Um, all the little different creatures that I played with. I played with the raccoon and the porcupine. There's three other ones. There's a rabbit. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a rabbit here. There is a squirrel. And there is a wolf, I think, fox, one of those two. It's in the book, I just forgot, because I haven't played with that one. And the board is fantastic. I have everything on it, so I'm not gonna lift that up. Uh, the dice are really nice. You got the colors of your, your, your own dice, the white dice for the village, you can tell them all apart. The art on the villagers, or the travelers, fantastic. You got the moose, what is that? Gray wolf. Skunk, that's three of them. Plus you saw the bear that I had up and uh, what else did I have? The uh, turtle and the first couple rounds that we played. I love all the production. I have the basic resources, so they're just wooden, or not wooden, but cardboard chits, like mushrooms and the yarn. The Kickstarter has fancy bits. I don't necessarily think you need a fancy bits, but they do look nice. So that being said, I don't have that. And the first player marker in the Kickstarter is a wooden piece of this. Still looks the same, but wood. But I love the production. It's fantastic. Um, no complaints as per usual. I mean, I've done Rec Raiders and Fossilus. Both great production. So same standard here. Now let's talk about the gameplay. This is a, a pretty like entry-level worker placement game. You're going to spaces. You're collecting resources. You're turning those resources in to toys, to score points, that kind of thing. The interesting thing about this is you only have information of two of the dice, of the six in the round. So what's that, 33% information? I have 33% of the information that I need to go out on the board to collect stuff. So if I don't have these lesson learned tokens to manipulate stuff, I may be out of luck. I may not roll a three, or I may not get a value of seven. Some of these cards, you need odd numbers. I may not get any odd numbers. So I'm going to this thing thinking, you know, I've got four dice, chances are good that 50% of these dice will be odd, but not always. So that's an interesting little take. It doesn't add a ton. It doesn't make the game difficult. It just gives it a little bit of randomness and intrigue that I kind of like. Because otherwise, it would be a basic worker placement game. And it would be really easy, I guess. But adding this mystery of these four dice, going to spaces and you don't know what's going to happen, makes it makes it for a good time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good game. Great worker placement game. Perfect for my eight-year-old daughter. She had a great time playing it. Loved it. Um, and we can't wait to play it some more. So... This is going to get a BGM accepted seal. This is going to get a 7.5 out of 5 on BGG, which is a 3.75, I think, if I do my math right. Yes, 3.75 out of 5 wrenches on an arbitrary rent scale. That means absolutely nothing. But we have to give it the games that we enjoy, and that's what I'm going to do. So that is Creature Comforts from Kids Table Board Gaming. I'm Jason with the Board Gaming Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming. Keep gaming.